a trip to for two to, to go from Atlanta to London. To London. <laughs> um, I did this. You tried that. You copy me. That's my sweat. That's my stuff. Give it back. Three words. I said trip. Hey, creeps, and welcome back to my channel. As you already know, you can't sit with me unless you are POP, and that is pretty on purpose. How you doing? So, you guys, uh, yesterday I gave us a break on the, what is it, Ressa Tessa, Arisa Tisa, whatever. I gave us a break on that because, you know, you can get overwhelmed with stuff. So, I was just like, hey, let's not do it, and we'll get back in it tomorrow, which is today. Anyway, so as you can see, we're about to do it. So, get your, um, I got me some tea because, yeah, I slept with a fan on, and I think I have, like, a little call. So, this is, like, a ginger peach turmeric tea fucking amazing so good with agave no sugar um i wanted to drink some wine with you guys but i was like yeah no i got the sniffles so get your wine weed whatever if you're cleaning your house and you're listening to it as a podcast that is great um but we're about to get into it i don't know where we're gonna go with this people told me keep going keep going so we're almost at the part where it just gets like mind-blowing so i am ready to see what Miss Resatessa, Resatessa, whatever, has for us now. Okay. All right. And before I start, you guys, somebody was like, Zoe, you're going out of order. No, I'm actually on her TikTok page. She numbered them wrong or whatever the case may be, but I'm actually like going in the order that she has them. Mind your fucking business. Okay. Jesus. All right. So we are on 21. Here we go. Miss, uh... Risa Tisa. Part 21, who the fuck did I marry? So, the company car apparently was a charcoal gray BMW, I believe it was a five series. It was a five series. Okay. I don't know much about the sedans. Y'all know I wanted the X5, dark blue with the cognac interior. He got the BMW five series, charcoal gray. He sent me a picture of the car. Okay. So I did see a picture of the car um after this whole ncr building take me to your office that is what he's claiming is that he left he leaves the company car mm -hmm. at that location he's saying that he drives from riverdale okay to midtown how long which is out cars and then drives from um midtown midtown to duluth Those that don't know how Metro Atlanta is, right. basically Midtown would be in between where we live <laughs> right. and Duluth. Uh huh. Um, I only know that he left the house every day at six fifteen. I know that you um, obviously don't I know never anything. physically saw the company car come to our home. Saw a picture, pictures, uh -huh. plural. Um. So when he told me mm -hmm. that he got a BMW 5 Series, mm. keep in mind, this is after <laughs> um, I had been promised a dark blue X5. So I was a bit salty. I don't care if it is a company car. I was a bit salty. So I a car made that. you salty, not um, a house. Because I felt like you you get to drive the car that you know I really want, which is a BMW. Um and so he would always he would call me from the car. Uh -huh. He would tell me, you know, yeah, I'm, um, I may I may just uh, I may just drive home in this car and not switch car, you know, switch back to his personal car. Oh, he was like, I don't know. He he did that a lot. And I realize now in 2024, he did that because he knew how excited I was to actually see the car. Because shit, I wanted to test drive it myself, to be honest with You're, you. And he knew that. So He just didn't have the car. Reaction. Stop um, making so lies. He was, he was stuff like that. Like, man, I'm so tired. I might just drive the, the company car, go ahead and go home. <laughs> and then, you know, just let me park it in a garage type thing. So eventually he stopped doing that because I didn't want to hear nothing about that car. I'm driving a Nissan and you driving a BMW. You think? After you promised me a BMW. So I don't really want to hear nothing about it. So in terms of the company car, I did see that it was, it was a, according to the pictures, a charcoal gray uh, BMW 5 Series. If you're asking me the exact model, I don't know. 
you don't know anything. But I know it's a five series because I know the seven series is slightly longer. So it's a five series sedan. Um, so after the whole situation with the cemetery to see his grandmother and grandfather's um, headstone, <laughs> then there was the NCR. The office is open. Oh, it's not open. Justin ain't working. Willie ain't working. Willie's supposed to be head of security. Uh huh. But he ain't working. Right. Okay. So at this point, I'm already numb. It is important for me to point out how numb I became dealing with him. Girl. Mind numbing. Because I just be. got to a point where it was like, there's always something. Uh, finally. There's always something. <laughs> so of course we're not going to go to the office. Because there's going to be something. Um, Jesus. So this is the end of February. My birthday had already passed. There clearly was tension on my end not so much tension on his end because he's relaxed so at home a couple of weeks later we are now in the beginning of march he know the this truth. is something personal about me the only way you would know this is if you know me you don't even know yourself i have been dying dying to go to london and paris um i had a layover in london when i did a study abroad but it's not the same. I want to go to London and be a whole tourist. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I want to see Buckingham Palace. I want to see about a lot of stuff. Um, the Tower of London. I want to see Paris. I want to see the Palace of Versailles. Mm. This is something, if you know me, you know. You want to see a lot. She wants to see Paris. She wants to see London. <laughs> so I get shit. home from work. This is the beginning of March. <laughs> I get home from work. Mm -hmm. And on the counter. London is a folder with like a little bow on it <laughs> and i'm like oh what is this is this like mail like was this something that you got at work he's like nah it's a surprise for you oh my god i open up the folder <laughs> inside the folder is like a trip itinerary <laughs> it is not an actual booked trip it's it, it's like an itinerary um a trip to for two to, to go from Atlanta to London. To London. <laughs> um the trip was should have happened and it was it was um the uh fuck the month on there was like I'm July. Sorry. So I'm it was sorry. a summer trip. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So he tells me I'm gonna take you to London. Oh my He was God. like, I try I wanted to take you for your birthday, mm -hmm. but certain things fell through he was like so this summer in july we're, we're going to go to london mm -hmm. he was like i've already made a reservation mm. for us to stay at the savoy mm. again there are certain things that my brain just was like remember that remember that he said i've already made a reservation for us to stay at the savoy mm -hmm. i know as much as i want to go to london y'all i didn't know anything about the savoy and so I remember going to look it up because mm. I was like, what is the Savoy? Well, apparently the Savoy is bougie. Ooh. Very bougie. Mm. So. So you got happy. I was so excited. Right. I cannot tell y'all. Right. For, fucking excited Forgot all the lies he done told. When I saw that he had. Mm. Um, apparently. Out British Airway. Like he was speaking my language. I am one of those people. I'm a planner. He's been so speaking your language. So when he's saying I'm going to take you to London. Mm. And he took the time to research flights. And print it out. And research the Savoy. And mm. print it out. Mm. And there were, there were different. Ex not excursions. But there were different things that you could do. You could go see the Tower of London. You could go see Buckingham Palace. Changing of the Guard. We could go have high tea at certain places. He was like I don't really want to go. But I know you're dying to go. So he was like you know i love you and i would do anything for you he would. blah blah black sheep have you any wool yeah, and so he was like now. i'm going to take you to london in july the trip did not include paris uh, that's fine but i was so excited it didn't include london either so excited <laughs> and so this is the beginning of march i was like this this is great. Mm. Hopefully this happens. I knew I needed to renew my passport. And he was saying that he had to renew his passport as well. Does he because have his one? passport had expired. So both of us were like, okay, we need to get on this if we're going to try to make it to London in July. And it's now March. Mm. Now we rushing. Me being the planner I am. I think I went to work the next day and printed out the passport applications so that we could fill it out and go ahead and get that process 
um, going. You're not much of a planner. So, um, needless to say, look at this. Something must have happened, and I don't remember what it was. You think? We just simply didn't fill out the application for the passport. Something. So, fast forward, we're now at mid March. Mm. Mid March. It's a year. The decision was made that my mom, who lived in Arkansas, was coming to visit us. She would be coming, I believe, the second week of April, and she was going to stay a week um, and then a few days. So, like, maybe a total of nine days. Okay. Not quite two weeks, but a little over a week. Mm -hmm. So she was coming in April and I was excited. Legion was excited because he was excited to physically meet my mom. Okay. He had talked to her on Zoom. He had talked to her on the phone, but he was excited to physically meet my mom. Mm. And my mom was was excited to physically meet her son-in-law. Who's been lying so, to her daughter? Okay. This is mid-March. Um, I'm going to go into part 22 where I explain what happened with Facebook Messenger? Mm. Lord have mercy. Part 22, who mm. the fuck did I marry? A so now we're in March. <laughs> this is right after he had surprised me with the announcement of we're going to go to London for um, a trip in July. Because mm -hmm. we definitely didn't do a honeymoon. We definitely didn't do any sort of trips together. Y'all haven't done so anything. The idea was we're <laughs> going canceled. to do a trip in July together. Um. And One thing about Legion was that... He's a liar. <laughs> he was the guy <laughs> who was like, I have nothing to hide. I don't lie. I don't like liars. Um, if we're in a relationship, then everything should be out in the open. So I've always had his cell phone passcode. Well, bitch, you shouldn't have been lost. Never felt the need to look through his cell phone. We see. Um... And funny enough, I can tell y'all right now, disclaimer, I will never go through a cell phone again. Mm -mm, you cheat in peace. You so should anyway, have been. Um, so one day, this is mid-March, going like around March 20th. Um, so we're heading in towards the end of the month. Uh -huh. He was in the shower. Keep in mind, my mom is coming for a visit in April. So he was in the shower and he received a text message on his phone from a woman. Oh. Um the text message because it was a preview so the text message was something where if you didn't know the context of the text thread mm. you could either go left or you could go right with it mm. so me being just curious i opened up the phone put the passcode in read the text then read the thread come to find out it was a text from his aunt his aunt and his ex share the same name that's why I say it could go left or it could go right. Text was from the aunt. So um, I went, I looked at the text, went, went through the thread, nothing in there. So I went ahead, X, uh, X out of the um, messages. I see that he has Facebook Messenger downloaded. Uh -uh. And obviously it shows you the, the number of um, unread messages in the icon. So it showed that he had like five unread messages. Oh. So I clicked on it just being nosy. Right. And what do my wondering astigmatism I see? Child, you should have been nosy with the other shit. So in his Facebook Messenger, you know about the wrong about stuff. Seven women. Oh. I can see um, their profile picture and I see their names. Some of them had a preview. The ones that um, he had not read, I could see the preview of the message. Uh -huh. One in particular said, when are you going to come get this? Oh. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. He had them lined up, So baby. I clicked on that one first. Right. Um, and I'm reading through the thread. And so she's saying, when are you going to come get this? Uh -huh. But earlier in the thread or further back in the thread, he had asked her, when are you going to give me? Oh. And she said, when lockdown is over. Mm. So from what I could piece together. G they fucking. <laughs> he had not yet physically gotten with her. Lie. Um, but had there been no COVID, oh, he would have smashed all day, every day. Girl. Um, the other messages were in you windows, meaning the other messages from the other women were in you windows. They were not as graphic as the one between him and her. So... I'm reading these messages and what is interesting is that the person I am married to is not the person in these messages. Like this man was on some nasty 
shit. Girl, he was using And I you. say nasty, not in a judgmental way, but in a, with Freaky. me, he seemed to act as if I was damn near virginal white. And I clearly see evidence that you into some shit that with me, you acting like, nah, I ain't really into that. So, um, I confronted him. I absolutely confronted him and was like, what the fuck is this? If two plus two is four and five plus five is 10. Girl, you weren't doing math this? in the beginning, so don't um, math now. And so he did not, you know, oh, that ain't, that ain't what happened. So blah, she blah, care blah. about a woman. Instead, what he hit me with is, man, I was just playing around. Like, ain't nothing happened. Um, you know, I shouldn't have said all that, but I was just flirting. And you it, say, it ain't mean nothing. I don't even know that girl. I was just flirting. Jesus. And Christ. so I'm like, is this what you into? And so he was like, no, it's not what I'm into. It was just stupid. It was stupid because I shouldn't have done it. So I'm going to be honest with y'all because I've been honest all this time. What pissed me off the most what? was that here I am as a woman behaving trying to do the right thing by him and this marriage and you mean to tell me you out here offering your dingling to random chicks that you don't even know girl yes because i was more angry at the fact that i'm like dude do you know how much i have turned down girl shut the in order fuck to be faithful up. to your dumb ass i ain't heard you talk about that one and piece I'm of dick yet that you basically are out here Girl. Acting like you got Skittles, taste the rainbow. Girl. Girl. I was hurt. I was angry. I thought about getting my lick back. I ain't, I'm just being honest. I did. No, you did. Um, and he he played it off like it ain't nothing serious. It ain't nothing serious. Don't you, you overreact. Don't get emotional. No, you didn't. It was just dumb. He was like, I will delete the messages. I'll even delete Messenger. Girl. And I, and I told him, I was like, that's really not good enough. Because that that's not gonna fix the root of the issue yeah. so this is where i introduced that we need to do marriage counseling he didn't have any issue doing marriage counseling i'm sure he did. we did not do premarital counseling um but he was like that's fine he was like i don't have no problem doing marriage counseling because if anything it can help us so i thought that Stop okay thinking. he may not have that's your problem cheated, from what I could see Stop on the messenger. Thinking. He may not have physically cheated, but he damn sure got caught, you know, d doing a little something, something. Because they had exchanged pictures. So y'all know what pictures he sent. That's enough for me. And I was disappointed. Because I don't like men that send, <laughs> I don't like men that send those type of pictures. But anyway, that's another issue. So... You're such we agreed a hypocrite. that we would start marriage counseling. We also agreed that we would put on a united front when my mom got there. In other words, we were not going to argue. We, you know... Y'all been doing that. So just <laughs> Let's just act like everything is that fine. That should be easy peasy. But <laughs> at that point, when my mother arrived in April, I could not stand him. I did not want to be... But we couldn't... Um, he moved back into our bedroom because he had, he had moved into the guest bedroom when I saw the messages. Like three uh, days before she came, he moved back into the bedroom because obviously she needed to sleep somewhere. That's so funny. So a so, woman made you act like um, that, but not I all really the other shit. I really him. And it was because I was busy second guessing myself like, damn, what's wrong with me? Like, if that's what you into and I'm supposed to be your wife, like, let's have conversations. Like, shit. Girl, you are I a place to, to stay. I understand some stuff, buddy. So An Airbnb, it, it a hotel. just was one of those things where it made me second guess, like, what's wrong with me? What did I do wrong? What is it that she got that I don't? <laughs> a um, brain. <laughs> because you all out here willy nilly, you know, messaging her all hours of the night because the thread went back quite a few weeks. Mm. I saw it in March. There were messages from December, November. Mm. So again, I'm just second guessing all kinds of stuff. Self-esteem taking a hit. So no, I did not want to be around him. I did not want um, I, I, I didn't like him. Period. I did not like him. I left and I would just go for a drive because driving clears my mind. I called driving. my aunt, told her what happened. I don't recommend that. I don't recommend calling family to tell them What's going on in your marriage? You should. You but should have been aunt. calling somebody. And my aunt lovingly was like, what do you want me to say? You married him. <laughs> you know, he ain't your boyfriend. Y'all can't just break up. That's the hard part about marriage is like, 
I mean, yeah, I guess you could leave him, but at the same time, you married him. So, honey, you're going to have to go back home. So she told you good advice and because that's what you're going to have doing. to figure this out. She was like, I can't give you advice right. on what you should do. Right. I'm sorry that this happened. Right. But, uh, but. Because if she would have told you to leave, you would have stayed you anyway. Married him. So, bitch, shut up. So, Bozo. even though it was just one drive, I went back home. And Me that's knew. when the discussion was. Um, we need to do marriage counseling. Mm. Part 23, who the fuck did I marry? Mm, mm, mm. So we agreed to do marriage counseling. Um, I had found a pastor and his wife who agreed to do our counseling, basically. Mm. Our counseling was going to be on Zoom, and it was going to be every other week, um, every other Tuesday. Okay. Initially, Legion was um, a legion of life. participating in it. <laughs> Um, Legion of his body life. language seemed to be that he was open and receptive to the marriage counseling. Uh, now, the pastor and his wife were deeply concerned at the fact that we had only been married three months and we were already dealing with some form of infidelity. We were in marriage counseling because they saw the flags before you did, as the pastor would put it there seems to not be any sort of intimacy. Hello. Um, they were concerned. Rightfully so. I think any person would be if they knew Except what you. was going on within those three months. So um, the pastor and his wife, it is, it is fair to note, we started counseling with them um, in the spring. We continued counseling with them up until a week before I found out what I found out and he got kicked out. So into the other bedroom. one of the first things that um, the pastor kind of talked to us about was, um, you know, are you what what was the deal with the Facebook messenger stuff? Um, and Legion was like, it was stupid. I shouldn't have done it. Um, it was just it really was just attention. And it just I got carried away. He, he felt like he was not going to, he kept saying, I'm not going to keep apologizing. I'm not going to keep getting persecuted um, after I told you, I'm sorry, I told you I wouldn't do it again. And I want us to move forward. You're either going to forgive me or you're not. <laughs> right. The pastor and his wife were like, wow, um, the audacity is real on this one. <laughs> so needless to say, we started moving slowly forward Girl, lie. um it was always in the back of my mind just like it was in the back of my mind with that black dodge charger it was one of those <laughs> things where okay oh, i see how you kind of are moving and operate he came to me a few days like after we started our first counseling session and he was like we should um get what? a joint bank account oh what he wanted to do was to each one of us have our own account mm -hmm. and to get a joint account for our money to go in there um, for joint expenses. Now, Lord, have mercy, up until this point, he had been paying the rent, the utilities, and I really was just paying for my stuff. So now he's suggesting, look, we're married now. Let's go ahead and get a joint account. I wasn't necessarily against it because I knew that I would still have my own account. I would still have my own savings. So what I countered with was, okay, let's take a look and see what we're working with. Show me your checking. Let's, let's look at each other's accounts. Look at what we have currently. He was cool with that. So he shows me his checking account. His checking account available balance was about, it was just over 9,600. Mine's was just over 1,500. So there was a huge disparity in the amounts. Um, and so he logged in on the phone and turned it towards me and I could see available checking, you know, available balance, just over 9,600. I logged into my savings. I showed him how much I had in savings. He logged into, picked up his phone, da, 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 logged into his Chase savings, turned the phone towards me. In the Chase savings, it was roughly about 15000 but I also knew that he told me he had a U.S. bank savings and he had an offshore savings. You so was just money time, hungry. I asked him, That's why show you me stayed. the U.S. bank savings. Show me, show me the other two accounts. That money had you he hooked. Would not do it. This became 
a huge bone of contention. He would not show me the two accounts that he claims has the most money in there, the accounts that he claims has money for a house in there, because he still was mentioning, hey, we need to get on this house thing if we're going to move um, when the lease is up. Mm-hmm. So I'm just adamant on why aren't you why don't you want to show me your savings account? You showed me the chase one. Like, I mean, that's enough, deal? baby. I got ninety six so ninety six hundred. Like, you got fifteen. And he was like, and my uncle always taught me this is not the uncle that died, another uncle. <laughs> my uncle always told me, you know, j- just keep your money tight because women can be I said women. Like Yes, because you already married. bitch. So you dealing with shit that you shouldn't be dealing with because of the money. Ho he fuck you talking about show it to me. So then we went back into marriage counseling, like the next session, and I bring it up. I said, he will not show me these two accounts that he claims has the money in there. Girl, you ain't paid for nothing. To buy a house. I told our pastor and his wife, I said, I saw the pre-approval letter, so I don't understand why he's not going to show me to just put me at ease (laughs) that he has the money in there. I had never questioned it before because, again... You tell me who in their right mind signs their name to a legally binding offer, an mm. all cash offer on a house. And they they just do it willy nilly. I don't know anyone that does that. Yeah. So I actually never questioned what was in the savings because I clearly saw him sign his name to a $699,000 all cash offer on a house. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go back to the parts in this playlist where I talk about. Girl, we don't have to go back and listen. We've been important. caught up since the beginning and we so knew the to run. His Shut up. Were like, Legion, that's not his name, y'all. That's a nickname. Legion, why would you why would you not show your wife your savings account? Like, what what's going on here? And so he made up some bullshit. And I remember the pastor's wife was that's like, normal. something, something ain't right. And so at this point, Legion kind of shuts down. He's just like, look, y'all are not going to tell me when and where I can open. I open up my accounts to show anybody the money I earned. I earned that money. I earned that money by playing football, blood, sweat, and tears. He went to this whole Denzel Washington monologue about how he earned that money. Girl, and no, one, no woman, no woman, no one is going on to you. come in and tell him that he needs to open up the account. So then he starts talking about the ex-wife and how she tried to get money from him in the divorce back when they were in California. So now the pastor and his wife, their red flags are just like, hello, whoa, so much so that the pastor said, they caught it in one day. Said, and I will never forget this. She said, you sure you forgot a lot of shit? I don't think you all are going to make it to January. Come on. What she was talking about is I don't think y'all are going to make it a year. And I really, truly was like, we're going to make it. Like, of course we're going to make it. And she was just like, I don't have a good feeling about it. And so Legion's all defensive. He he at this point he's folding his arms and he and because remember we're on Zoom. He's folding his arms and he's just like, I'm I'm done with this. Like, I'm not gonna get attacked because I'm not comfortable showing you the amount of money that I have. I agree. Money changes people. It's not even been a year. And I'm not comfortable. Of marriage. So he's playing that victim card. Um and so the pastor and his wife were like, you know, we we're, we're still going to help y'all as much as we can. But so he was like, I'm not comfortable. Mm-hmm. And basically the pastor and his wife were like, look, we'll help y'all as much as we can. <laughs> but there's some deep issues here. And, you know, had you this is what they advised us. Had the two of you came to us for premarital counseling we would have told you, do not get married. Y'all should not even be together. Mm. That is what our, <laughs> that is what the pastor and his wife told us in marriage counseling. And you still stayed after if that. If you two had come to us for premarital counseling, we would have told you. That's sad. They figured it y'all out. Y'all should not even be together, let alone get married. But here we are. So we will help you guys as much as we can. But the pastor's wife was like, I don't have a good feeling that y'all are going to make it a year. 
part 24, who the fuck did I marry? Uh, so, remember, we're in April. Um, we're now moving towards the end of April. And he still did not show me his um, savings account. Saw the checking. Saw the chase savings. Girl, we know how it is. Speed so it up, to He decides that we should start looking for a house again. Because my lease was up in August. And I made it very clear that when the lease is up, I am moving. I wanted to move to Cobb County. So um, he was like, you know, we need to get the ball rolling. I didn't want any parts of it. Didn't want any parts of it. He found a realtor. This time it was a woman. It was a woman. Um, And I believe her name was Amber. I think her name was Amber. So he found a realtor and um, kind of, we, you know, he told her what the budget was. Amber started finding houses. So please understand, or you don't really have to understand, but um, I believed, I believed he was a sane, rational human being sane enough that you would not sign an offer on a home if you didn't have the money that's what i believed so when we started working with this is why you didn't believe in god when that tire power i believe you need to stop believing three or four houses it was not nearly as many as the other realtor scott I know Amber and Scott are so, over it. They need a support group. One of the houses. <laughs> they um, are surviving Legion. <laughs> I love the house. You loved all of them. Um, I really wanted to put in an offer on that house. <laughs> and I'm going to post it on the screen. The house. Mm-hmm. Love that house. Mm-hmm. It was just absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. And nice once house. again, he wanted to put in an all cash offer on the house. Oh, go ahead. But before he could put in an all, he had told Amber, I want to put in an all cash offer. Uh-huh. And what Amber, the woman, mm-hmm. was smart enough to say is, okay, let's just go ahead and take it one step at a time. Let's go ahead and get your pre-approval stuff together. She said, I work with a great lender who, if, you, if you're not already pre-approved, um, he can get you pre-approved, no issues. Um, and then if you want to do an all cash offer, then we'll go ahead and get the proof of funds together. So that way we can submit it all with your offer. He finna run. Your proof of funds, baby. He finna run. Jesus. You call him. (laughs) Y'all already know what happened. He ran. What happened on the last house with Scott. Um, basically Legion was like, well, I can get you whatever you need. That's fine. Mm. But... I really don't want to submit proof of funds <laughs> unless they accept the offer. They got him in the chokehold, baby. Amber, and I don't know where she is. I don't even know if she'll ever see this video. In a support group. Um, <laughs> anyway, let me keep going and I'll explain why that woman has Please a special do. place in my heart. So Amber was like, you know, I totally understand. Um, but this is how we're going to do it. <laughs> Um, I'm going to need that paperwork, okay? And um, we'll submit it with your offer. Mm. It, she she just simply was like, yeah, this is how we're going to do it. And so he did not submit the paperwork um, when she had asked him to. And I remember I was driving to work and I stopped at the Quick Trip on Upper Riverdale Road oh, I know what I in said. Riverdale, Georgia. And Amber had called me. It was it was in the morning. She had called me. Um, and I believe with all my heart that Amber knew something was up. But she also knew I did not know what was up. So she called me and she was like, I just don't understand. Like, if he has the paperwork, like, you can submit the paperwork. But... The issue was the Chase paperwork that I had was from a year prior. So my understanding was that it pretty much was no good at this point. Um, 
So she said, he can, all he has to do is just email it to me or take a picture of. She was like, I just need to know that he's fun. able to back up his offer. And I right. said, I totally get it. Um, and she was explaining some stuff to me. She was like, you know, he needs to do X, Y, and Z. And so I said to her, I remember I said, but you like doing all this planning and don't know I don't this. know what's going on. We know you don't, bitch. I mean, oops. I said, um, <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to get down to the bottom of it, but I don't know what's going on. Really? And so you've had a year. Let's put a pause you, on this whole thing. You've been paused. Let's put a pause on looking at houses. You said that. Let's put a pause on um, getting his pre-approval letter. What happened to London? Because... <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. We know. And she got quiet. As she should. And she said, okay. I said, and I know this sounds weird. And she said, no. She said, that is actually very smart. She said, um, do your research. She, bitch. She and not. if I can be of assistance, Please call do. me. She said, whether you buy a house with him or you buy a house on your own, mm. I will be more than happy to represent you. I don't know where Amber is today. Away from you. But that one sentence, I felt like, yeah. I felt like just woman to woman, she was basically telling me. What? Something ain't right. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Baby, something ain't right. Shut up. You've been saying that. And now <laughs> you need to open your eyes. Girl, you still walking I'll be by. more than happy to work with you. Um. If y'all get your shit together, I'll work with both of you. But whether you buy a house or not, do your research and then let me know what I can do. Amber, she did. She went through that Facebook was our conversation messenger. at the Quick Trip. She went up get a house two, Road. Three times. So I got off the phone. Amber, she's been researching. Um, that was the last time that we worked with any sort of real realtor. That was the last time that we looked at any sort of house. Um, and I don't know, I don't remember exactly what happened you after that did. meeting that day. I do know that when I went home, I simply told him, I don't want to look at a house right now. Said um, I said, I think it's okay if we rent. Um, we'll just find a house in Cobb County and just rent. Um, for a year and let's and let's build you know save some more money let's just um let's not worry about buying a house right now and basically what i was trying to do was save face because yeah, your face has that was the first unsafe. time with amber that i actually was embarrassed at the fact that we're wait we he and I, because I felt like I was complicit in the fact that I'm going to look at houses with him. I felt like we are wasting these people's time. I did not mean to waste your time. I clearly see my time as being wasted, but that doesn't mean I need to waste your time. And I felt embarrassed at the fact that we wasted her time um, coming across as serious buyers when time came to put up or shut up. Nothing was put up and I knew nothing. I had nothing to add to the, to, to add to this because we're talking about a $650,000 house and you know, I'm, I'm, I don't make that. I don't make anywhere near that. So it, was, it just became one of those situations where I was trying to save face. I was trying to save face with my husband and I was trying to save face with Amber. And so I did say to him, Let's just rent for another year and then let's see um, at that time where we are, if we should go ahead and buy. So now is when shit is about to get real. Mm. Part 25, who mm. the fuck did I marry? All right, let's so, go. So we weren't looking at houses anymore. We were not working with a realtor anymore. Mm. The end of April, I had decided that I wanted to look for another job. I did. The reason I wanted to look for another job is petty. Yeah, it is. I wanted to look for another job because I was pissed off at the fact that um, I had basically was dependent on him to You've help with the depending. car note. 
So I wanted to look for another job where I could afford life all by myself, including that car note. About Basically time. where I would make more money. Thank you. I told him that I was going to start looking for another job. He laughed. And his exact words were, you're not going to leave Georgia State Patrol. He was like, I swear you love them niggas more than you love me. Mm. He laughed. As he should. So that fueled me even more. So I was hitting the pavement hard trying to find another job. I was applying to all kinds of places. Mm. Got a phone call um, from my current job. So this is how I ended up in my current job. Got a phone call, um, they and they had sent me an email with a background packet. The background packet was long and extensive, but in the background packet, it asked for my spouse's full name, my spouse's date of birth, and my spouse's social security number. Mm. So I showed it to Legion, and I was like, I need your social because, Uh-oh. you know, I'm applying for this job. It's a great job. It's way more money. Um, oh, and you know, we're talking about moving anyway to Cobb County. So this, you know, this, this is a God thing. He did not want to give me his social. I bet he did. I explained, I, I showed him the paperwork where I was like, look, because we are married, I, I can't lie on here. So help me. <laughs> um, so he writes down his social security number on the background packet. You're a lie. And um, I eventually turned it in. I had scanned it, <laughs> saved it in my email, and, and sent it in. Oh, girl, you got that right. And back. I looked at it one day, be, just going through it, just making sure I didn't really miss anything. All T's were crossed, all I's were dotted. And I looked at his social, and something about the social seemed different then the social security number that I remember seeing when we did our marriage license. Uh oh. And so for those who you remember in the previous part, I said I had ran his social security number from the marriage license. Nothing came back. So I thought that I had written it down wrong. Basically, what it is, is that the first three numbers were different on the background packet than what was on the marriage license. Mm. If you don't know this, here's a little trivia. Your social security number, the first three numbers, pretty much are dictated by the state you were born in and the state that issued your birth certificate. So mm-hmm. he was born in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. So his social, the first three letters, excuse me, the first three numbers of his social security number should be attributed to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, shit, they probably got like five, six different numbers, uh, three-digit numbers that your social security number can start with. Mm -hmm. So the social that was on the marriage license, for example, um, was probably one, two, three. What was on the background was four, five, six. Mm. Both of those social security three digit prefixes are issued through the state of Pennsylvania. Again, this is an example so I can make it clear. So when I saw his social on my background, I immediately knew that was a different social than what I saw on the marriage license. Um, And when I compared, because I I had found a copy of the marriage license that we turned in because I had filled it out on the computer. Mm -hmm. So, Sure enough, the first three numbers were different. Mm. The rest of the numbers were the same. So one of two things, either when I ran his background, I did in fact put in the wrong number Uh or the number on the mayor certificate or the um, background packet is wrong. Right. So I decided that I was going to roll the dice and take the social from the background packet. Again, this is the background packet that I had to fill out to get my current job. I was trying to get a new job. Okay, so I took that social and Mm -hmm. I ran a background check on it. What came back on this particular background was all the addresses that the social security number, I guess, had been um, attached to. So all of the addresses, 
the states were Georgia, Rhode Island, mm. Pennsylvania. Mm. What I did not see California. was California. Uh-huh. So I thought that was weird. I thought, okay, maybe this is not a complete background because clearly he went to San Diego State. It's on his resume. Didn't I say stop thinking? It's on, when you think you don't really be thinking. quite a few things. Social media. He didn't have a LinkedIn, but it was on his social media. So clearly he had he had been to California. Mm. So maybe I just need to do a different background check. Also to note during this time, he, um, he, I think I told you guys, he had hit his leg at work. Okay. So what was happening was it was getting more and more difficult for him to walk, like put pressure on that leg, on that knee. Um, he was still able to go to work. He was, he was still leaving at 6.15 in the morning. He mm-hmm. was still coming back between 3.30 and 4 o'clock. But I clearly could see where he was in pain. Mm-hmm. Um, he would elevate the knee, ice the knee. It was it was getting worse. And I was constantly like, go to the doctor. Let me take you to urgent care mm-hmm. so that they can look at this knee. Because you shouldn't still be limping and having a hard time um, putting weight on that knee. Mm-hmm. And every single time he was like, oh, you know, it's it's fine. I have a doctor's appointment on Wednesday. The doctor just told me to ice it and to elevate it. Um, this hap- This is an old football injury. It happens all the time. Mm-hmm. It used to happen a lot when I was out in California. So I'm mentioning this knee issue for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, but back to the background. So once again, when I ran the background the second time with his second social, It showed me states of Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And that is all this. That's all that I saw in terms of addresses. I didn't see anything for California. Uh So by this point, we're moving into May of 2021. Things are starting to reopen. One of the things that reopened was San Diego State. So I called San Diego State. I called the registrar's office. Registrar's office. Um, someone did answer, and there was there was um, instructions on how to request a transcript. Um, I was able to try to request it online. You needed the person's the student's name, and I believe you also need their social. And when I typed it in, it said no results found. Mm. Um, I believe that I sent an email asking, you know, this person is, didn't go is there. saying that they were a student there. Can you verify it? He didn't go there. The response I got was there were no records found with that social security number. Mm. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. I asked him about it. Oh, girl, no, you And mean. in part Liar. 26, I'll tell you exactly. Girl, come on, we know that. Shut the fuck up. His response was part 26. Who the fuck did I marry? Mm. So I asked Legion, what's the deal about San Diego State? He was like, what are you talking about? Mm. And I said, um, why is there no records of you there? <laughs> I just came right out and said it without missing a beat. This man said, well, I was a private citizen. (laughs) What the fuck does that mean? And what he said is that when he started at San Diego State, his father paid money. So, okay, it's important I say this with a straight face. His, His father paid money so that his name and social would not be publicized and he would be considered a private student, a private citizen. Um, He said that he had a card where all he had to do was show the card. He does not have to give his name. He does not have to give any information because he had that card. Uh (laughs) Jesus Christ. He said, so San Diego State would not public, would not have any record of him. But he was, in fact, a student there. At this point, is the knee pain even real? He said, and he claimed that you played football. He, he was like, I did play football. I said, so you're saying that the school did not publish your name anywhere and they were in violation of NCAA rules? Mm. 
And he was like, why are you asking all these questions? Right. And I said, I'm just curious. I'm just, mm, meh, I'm just curious. You're saying that you were a private citizen. You should have been curious. But yet, yeah, how did you, how were you in compliance with NCAA if you were a private citizen? And they did not publish your name on any roster. Um, so that was his excuse. He was like, all I can tell you is that I was a private citizen. My dad paid for it. <laughs> okay. So now I know that San Diego State has no record of him. Now I know that his social security number, at least the one that's on my back, my background packet, only shows that he listed in he excuse me only shows that he lived in Georgia, Rhode Island, and Pennsylvania. Okay, so at this point, the pain in his knee is getting worse. Girl, uh, it's getting to the point where when he would come home from work. Uh. He would take a shower and Lie. immediately get in bed, elevate his knee. He was he was not even eating um, the way that he used to eat. This man is playing a it role. It was getting to the point where at times, um, if you remember when I told you all about the miscarriage, they gave me pain meds. His money was getting low. I that pill. But the pain meds I was allergic to, so I couldn't take them. But I still had them. So the pain in his knee was getting to the point where he would take one of those pain meds just to get through the night. He was constantly in agony, constantly kind of tossing and turning. So much so he that in addicted. May, he moved into the guest bedroom. Oh, he wanted to get away from I you. couldn't deal with the tossing and turning thing. And he just said he was more comfortable there. I bet. So what, t- what at first was a... Oh, I hit my knee at work. Turned into no, it was an old football injury. This has happened before. Turned into, you know, it's painful for me to walk on it. Turned into, it's it's actually hard for me to work. Oh, told you. Um, but he was he was still going to work at six fifteen every morning and coming home between three thirty and four. So, um, it is. Again, I'm just giving you guys the chronological order of how all this happened. So at this point, we're not looking at we're not looking for a house. Um, I still have not seen the two savings account. I'm pretty sure there's no money in those savings accounts. But again, he was going to put in an all cash offer with. Amber the real yeah, you ain't gotta convince us. So we know it ain't shit there, baby. I really didn't know what to believe, but I I believed what I saw, which is you I saw that that background anything. is not showing where he went to California. So at one point in May, it was close to mid May, he calls me she's, from work. He calls me from work, calls me while I'm at work, and tells me that he got a phone call from his stepson. The phone call from his stepson, the stepson was crying and was just absolutely distraught. Mm. And I'm at work in my office like, what's going on? Right. And he says to me that the stepson informed him that his stepdaughter passed away. Bitch. That she died from COVID. The stepson, this is the story. The stepson found her in her apartment because they had not heard from her for a couple of days. And she was unresponsive. He called the ambulance. They pronounced her dead when she got to the hospital. So he was calling to tell me that she had died. Bitch. Um, He done killed off the whole family. And he was also calling to ask me if I would object to him giving his ex-wife $2,000 $2,000 towards the funeral. As I've stated before, and I and I still am this way to this day. I don't play about death. So when he told me that she died, I immediately went into the, all right, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, whatever we can do to help, let's help. Because... Surely nobody would make that up. 
So he, he again, he was like, are you are you OK with that? He was like, we're married. And the agreement was that anything over five hundred dollars would be a discussion. So two thousand definitely. And I said, yeah, I said, that's totally fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, oh my God. He was upset because, again, he was close with the kids. And my heart went out to his ex-wife. It did because I I can't even imagine. I cannot even imagine. So part 27, who the fuck did I marry? So here's what we oh, are shit. at and here's what we can establish. Uh. Number one. I ran an initial background check on the social security number that was on our marriage license. You know this. Nothing came back. I subsequently applied for another job. In that job, I had to fill out a background packet. The background packet asked for my spouse's name, date of birth, and his social security number. The social security number on the background packet for the new job did not match the social security number that he gave me for our marriage license. If you are confused, I believe it's in part 25 yeah, we're not or confused. part 26 that I explain that. So we can establish that I then ran a background check on the new social security number that was on my background packet. It came back with um, address or excuse me, states that it that the social security number apparently had lived in. Those states were Georgia, Pennsylvania. You said Rhode that Island. five times in the last video. Yeah. God damn. I decided, this is now around May 20th, I decided to do another background check. Um, and I paid to do another background check. Uh -huh. This time, I did it with a different company. And not only did it give me the addresses, excuse me, not only did it give me um, the states, it gave me addresses and it also gave me names of people who were like associated with Legion and that address. Mm -hmm. One of those names was his ex-wife. I've always known, he's, he's always told me the name of the ex-wife. But now I see it when I ran his background. I did a search for her on social media. She was not there. So the address that it showed that she was associated with, with him, because remember his story is we got LA. married in San Diego. We lived in San Diego. We divorced in San Diego. Men lie. Women lie. The U.S. federal government, which is a social security number, does not. So... Um, he's saying he was always in California. His social security number never showed that he was in California, according to the background check. Mm -hmm. It did show that he had lived in Georgia at an address associated with the ex-wife. Mm -hmm. So try to find the ex-wife, could not find her on social media. So I looked in the metro counties to protect her identity, this, I am going to not divulge a lot on this part. Mm -hmm. I looked in the metro counties, in the um, the open record courts. So typically, you know, you can look in like superior court or magistrate court. You got to spend money court. for that so stuff. I looked so you in was just open spending records money. for the different counties, metro counties, metro Atlanta counties. Let me be clear. Uh -huh. Metro Atlanta counties. Well, you got to do all and that. And I walk looked away. under her name and I found where they had filed for divorce in a metro Atlanta county. Mm -hmm. So when he said that he filed for divorce in San Diego uh -huh. and that he was married in San Diego, I was able to find no, according to the state of Georgia, you were married here. Mm -hmm. You were divorced here. Mm -hmm. So what about the children? Looked under her name, found a record, found a record for divorce, and it did show his name. So now I clearly see on my computer that there is a metro count metro Atlanta County court that has a divorce record in the state of Georgia between him and his ex wife. So I did what any rational person would do mm -hmm. because this is still kind of COVID time. Um, well, not really 
it had nothing to do with COVID. Let me take that back. Because of the parameters of the court, you can only do the open records request in person. I did what anybody would do. I told my boss I had to go. Mm-hmm. I grabbed my purse, grabbed mm-hmm. my keys, and I drove to the court to do the open records request in person. The open records request was for the divorce documents. Go back in the story, in the series, and Girl, remember we don't need I to. went over, I did a background on the ex-wife. I told you all exactly what was told to me. He met her in California. He married her in California. He divorced her in California because she cheated we on him. We don't need to know he this. He filed for divorce. We know. She tried to get spousal support. It, it, turned, it was going to be a little ugly. He was helping her with the kids. That was the story that was told That's to what me. what you had to do for you. So, went to the court, filled out the paperwork, got the open records request for the divorce decree, for the divorce records. <sighs> First thing I see, he didn't file, she did. Second thing I see, they didn't make it more than six months. She, I see the, the date of marriage. I see the date of divorce. She date got the of, fuck on. Uh, dissolution. Six months. She got the fuck on. Second, uh, third thing I see, he was served in Metro Atlanta, which means that at the time of the divorce, he was living in Metro Atlanta. Had nothing. California was never mentioned. Fourth thing I see, he filed what is called a pop pauper affidavit. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to do my best to explain it real quick. Basically, he filed an affidavit with the court saying that he is so poor he could not afford the fees mm. to pay for a divorce. He couldn't afford a filing fee. He couldn't afford a service fee. That is what a pop pauper affidavit is for Mm. all of this is in um the divorce documents she had filed she said it was irreconcilable differences she was not requesting any money whatsoever she just wanted to be gone um and both of them had signed a pauper affidavit he was served in georgia at his previous employment according to the divorce documents, he was served at like a grocery store. <laughs> that is what was listed as his employer. And it had a date of when he was served. So I see all of this in one day. So you said like he worked at I Amazon, he worked at Kroger. Where on the divorce documents, because the khaki, she listed her name, Kroger. her address, and her phone number. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. So I did with any rational no, person. No, you didn't. Did. No, you didn't. I wrote down the phone number. No, you didn't. There was a 50-50 chance that the number was already disconnected. Mm. She could be like me. I'm one of those people. Honey, you can sneeze at a 27-degree angle. I will change my number so quick, you ain't even know what hit you. You so quick you to do that, but can't walk away. And at 5.05, my number has been changed. <laughs> so she could have been like me. I don't believe she And the number say. is not even active. Lie. Or... She could be like some people I know who have kept their numbers since kindergarten. And we will walk away and ignore you. Either way, I wrote the number down. I um, left the court and I immediately went back to work. And the same friend Uh who helped me when I had my miscarriage, I told her, I was like, I got this phone number. This is the ex-wife. She was like, girl, you better call. You better call and, fi- and find out from her because can't no. I think she says to me, can't nobody tell you what is going on quite like the ex-wife. Right. So part 28 is the phone call that I had with the ex-wife. Mm. Part 28 of who the fuck did I marry? So I had the phone number, went back to work. Um, my really good friend was like, you better call her. Mm -hmm. You can use my phone, Mm. but call her. So I called her. Um, She answered. Uh Let me use aliases. Um, And the conversation went like this. May I please speak with Barbara? This is Barbara. Barbara, this is Shirley. Oh, Shirley who? This is Shirley Jones. I am the wife 
of Legion. Oh. Silence. Right, she gagged. Then she starts laughing. <laughs> and she said to me, and I quote, Run. If you were calling me, then I know it's bad. Damn. I chuckle. And I said to her, I'm not trying to bother you. I'm not trying to disrupt your life. Right. I I said, I am literally coming to you on some woman to woman shit. I said, because you are probably the only person who can help. <laughs> but if you she and she she listened, she was she was gracious. And she said, um, she said, what is it that you need to know? Or what is it that you want to know? And I said, I understand that you and my husband talk and communicate. Um, and she was, and she immediately said, what? Right, bitch. <laughs> no, we don't. Hello? And I said, okay. Um, she said, one thing you need to know about Legion she said, whatever he tells you. It's not real. It is a lie. Yep. And she said, when he, again, let's go back to part one. Yeah, we figured this out at the guys beginning. that when he introduced himself or when we met. I hate when she did this. We actually had matched on two different sites. Okay. And he was under two different names. One was an act was like the actual birth name. The other one was a nickname variation of that name. Mm -hmm. That's the name I know him by. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if his name was Matthew, <sighs> then it was Matt. He had a profile under Matthew, and then he had a profile under Matt. We knew that. I would have known him as Matt. We're not stupid like you. So, God damn. She said to me, she was like, I don't even know who Matt is. She was like, that's not even his name. Oh. And so I knew what his actual government name is. She was like, no one calls him Matt. She was like, that must be his new um, his new personality. Or she she was cracking a joke, but she was like, anything he tells you, you need to know is a lie. So I just asked her, I said, Girl, we ain't even dating what was we know your that. experience? I said, because I can tell you the story he told me. And she, and she stopped me right there. She said, whatever he told you was a lie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she said, let me guess. He told you I cheated on him. Let me guess. He told you that I wanted money from him. And I said, yeah. And she said, yeah, that's a complete lie. But how does she know that? Um, so we had a if, conversation where she told me how they met. But how does um, she know that? They didn't that? meet online or anything. I said, well, were you guys ever in California? She said, no. She's like, he, she was like, that man ain't never been from past the East Coast. So I said, okay. Um, Ask about football. So you guys have always been in Georgia. And she said, yeah. She's like, we got married in Georgia and we got divorced in Georgia. And she, that's when she asked me, how did you even get my number? She said, because I want nothing to do with him. Mm. So how did you get my number? I told, And I said, I'm going to tell you the truth. It ain't going to make me look good. I told her, I said, this is, this is what happened. And this is what led to me doing research. And this is how I got your number. And she laughed. She was like, wow. Right. She, she was like, normally I would be freaked out, she said. But under the circumstances, she was like, wow, okay. Um, I would have been like, wow, you She said, stupid. yeah, if you're calling me, then it must have gotten pretty bad. She said, so what did he promise you? And <laughs> we talked for about... 30, 35 minutes. She asked me in that phone call, she said, look, I want nothing to do with him. I have not spoken to him since our divorce was finalized. She said, so I would just appreciate if you keep me out of whatever's going on with y'all. And I told her, I said, I give you my word. I will never tell him I spoke to you. I said, I give you my word. I said, this, this, this conversation is for me. Mm. It is not for me to use in any sort of legal litigation, nothing. This is for me. Mm. And um, I said, I, I said, I don't plan to call you again. I don't plan to As be a, disrupt, a disruption in your life. I just needed to know 
What happened? How bad is it? Girl, you see. And she was she paused and she said, Run. It's bad. <laughs> She said, I don't know what all y'all got going on. She said, but if it's anything like what it was for me, it's bad. So we talked a little bit more. She was very encouraging. She was like, girl, do not blame yourself. She said, "Um, I went through that and I I had blamed myself. She was like, this is not on us. This is on him. I'm sorry. Um, She was like, he Um, is a master liar. A master manipulator. Because you, she said, I ignored the red flags. So she was like, "Do not feel as though this is." You on have you. to take some type of accountability. <sighs> we talked about um, just the dude. The ex. There's an ex girlfriend that shares the name that shares the same name as his aunt. She and I talked about her. She said um, the reason why they broke up because the ex girlfriend. I didn't know this. The ex-girlfriend had reached out to her about six months before he met me. Mm. And so (laughs) the ex-girlfriend lives in, um, lived in Douglasville. On Legion's driver's license, he had a Georgia driver's license with the Douglasville address. What he told me was that it was the address that his sister, because remember I told y'all his sister Shantae lives in Douglasville. She's a nurse married with two kids. That's the girlfriend. So he told me that the address on his license, it was his driver's license, was, a sister. was to Shantae's house. Yep, that's his girlfriend. The ex-wife is telling me that's no. The, right. That's the address for the girlfriend. That's the why y'all never went to the party. He had moved in with her. Uh-huh. And he created this whole narrative with her. She found out um, that he was lying. And talking to you. And she kicked him out. Uh-huh. And he needed somewhere to stay. And so, so he came I to guess you. after she kicked him out, she then um, reached out to the ex-wife. Kind of the way I did for confirmation. Mm -hmm. And so the ex-wife was just telling me, whatever that man has told you, Mm -hmm. it is a lie. Mm. She said, I got out before it got too bad. Um, She said, because once I knew he was lying, I was out. Mm -hmm. She was like, because he's never going to (laughs) change. And you Um, sitting here hoping for the money. Again, conversation went on and on. And so finally, we were getting ready to get off the phone. And before we got off the phone, I said to her, I said, if everything is a lie, I said, I have one question for you. Kids. She said, sure. Ask about the kids. I said, how is your daughter? Oh, shit. (sighs) She ain't got no kids. I said, how is your daughter? Next part coming up. Part 29. Who the fuck did I marry? I knew she was going to drag So you. I asked her. We know. She said, my daughter's fine. <laughs> and I said, okay. Mm. She said, what did he say about my daughter? And I will be honest with y'all. I didn't have the heart to tell her. What? Oh, so what I said instead was, oh, no, it was you know with everything with COVID, I think he mentioned that she might have, um, she might have had COVID or was exposed to it. I downplayed it bad. I wasn't gonna tell that woman that he said her daughter passed away. Um, so she, j- I said, you know, obviously I'm I'm glad to hear that kids are fine. Mm. She she said, look. Whether you stay with him or not mm-hmm. is your choice. Right. She said he ain't gonna change. He ain't gonna change at all. Girl, she know this um, already. She just she said saying. this. Th- this is what he does. She know. She said you're not the first. You're not gonna be the last. She said he did it to me. She was very very encouraging because she was just like you do not blame yourself. She said you know we both ignored red flags. Um, so whose fault is, is that? Not your fault. Whose fault she is said, this it? This is on him. Whose fault is it? 
Because then and you can so go with somebody else we, and keep you know, making again, the same I mistakes. Thank you for her time. Got off the phone. I took the long way home that night. Um, <laughs> I, I could not be around him. <laughs> I could not be around him. I had to figure something out. I had to, I had to figure some things out. So I just... I, you say get out. I took the long way home. Uh-huh. What does that mean? It means that I purposely... I probably could have taken, oh, 75 to 285, but I probably took 20 to 75 to 285 yeah, to... Probably. 675 kind you know of everything like I just but the route home, home. Girl, um, shut up. you another legion a couple of days later because i really my my mind was spinning a couple of days later at this point i'm turning into the fbi cia <laughs> and homeland security all in one literally right. i'm mm. i'm trying to find everything um and he's carrying on his business as usual. Mm-hmm. Nothing changed with him. He had no idea that I had spoken to the ex-wife. He had no idea I had gone to the court and saw his divorce um, documents. He had no idea. So a couple of days later, I decided to look up his mother's obituary. Oh, Jesus. Look up the mother's obituary. And um, down at the bottom... Where it talks about, oh, she's preceded in death by, and it lists all the people, the family members that died before. Uh And then it says, leaving behind to cherish her memory. It lists the husband, his dad, Uh her husband, excuse me. Let me start over. It lists her husband, which is Legion's dad. Yeah. It lists Legion's brother that lives in Philly and his wife. Because again, this is 2000. She passed away in 2015. So it lists Legion. The, the brother in Philly and his wife and daughter, her granddaughter, it lists Legion and his wife. I think it was like Latoya or La, La something. La something. Who is Latoya? Um, it did not well, list the ex-wife I just spoke to. And it clearly said Legion. His wife, Latoya, then it listed the brother in Nashville, his wife, Jane, or whatever. So I'm thinking to myself, there's two things I was thinking immediately. Who's Latoya? Because they ain't divorced. um, Who is Latoya? Never heard that name before. I would have been like, hey, Legion. Never heard that name. Latoya came by the house and got a charger. I was thinking, who is Latoya? (laughs) And then number two. Where are the two sisters? Mm. Shantae and Kim. Shantae lives in Douglasville, married with two kids. No, Shantae is is not real. And I believe he told me she worked at like Procter and Gamble. Shantae's not real. So why are they listed on here? Because apparently, go back to the video. She lied. I posted it on there. I gave y'all background on the family. He apparently was one of five through both parents brother in Philly, Shantae brother, not real. younger brother in Nashville, an older sister in Douglasville, and a baby sister in Augusta. You lying. So why is it on his mother's obituary there's only three, you lying. three children named? You lying. Where are the, where are the two sisters? You lying because you just told us that you was talking to the so ex-wife. I'm even more like and what in the that was the on? address in Douglasville was her. And then I started thinking her. myself, where, why wouldn't they list Shantae? Like, they talk all the time, so I know that they're close. Shantae. Because he talks to Shantae all the time. Because it's the girlfriend. So, I, w- I really was confused. Again, keep in mind, Am I'm I trying to get y'all insight y'all? into how I was thinking May of 20, uh, excuse me, May of 2021. Because I still, still didn't find out a lot of stuff at that time. I and found remember out he enough said to figure that out, okay, was going to come pick her up to take her to the doctor. Uh, what a baby. It's not a question of if he's lying. That 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 was over. Gonna have your girl. It's not a question of if he's lying. The question now is becoming what else is he lying about? You're lying. So, we had the phone call with the ex-wife. Now I see an obituary that apparently there's another wife. I know on our marriage certificate it only states he had a one previous marriage 
I had zero, he had one. So this is how I'm thinking in my head, which is, okay, what am I, what am I missing here? I know we've established that he's lying, but who, who the fuck is Latoya? Like, I'm really trying to understand who is Latoya. Um, and again, he's, he's hobbling around the house, limping. And I'm, I'm in our bedroom, well, in the bedroom, just, I mean, I could not get on Google fast enough to try to figure some stuff out. So, um. I'm trying to think. Because she's. See the mom's obituary. Study it. And at this point, I'm now trying to figure out, okay, what's the game plan? Girl, leave. What is the game plan? Leave. Tell him you know everything. The fuck? That's what is hard? We are about to get into the next part. Girl, shut the fuck up. Part she, 30. She's of about to piss me off because. Mary. So I'm going to use this as a clarification video. So we're going to use part 30 as a stop. Let's clarify some things. We don't need um, to. Before on a previous set she's going to try to so fix up that sister shit. Do that so that way because she fucked I can up. Try to address some of the things that I have seen in the comments, um, both supportive and just downright mean. <laughs> but let me clarify some stuff. Number one, it is important to remember that I am telling this entire story of how I met, dated, married, and divorced. A pathologically lying ex-husband. Okay, I am know going that. in chronological order of events. We know that. So what that means is that we know what that means, sir, whoever you are. If you were coming in at part thirty, but you have not seen part eleven, okay, some fuck stuff them. is not going to make don't sense. Matter. I know, I know, I know. It is a long playlist, um, and don't worry about watching the video as soon as it comes out because everything I'm trying to do this. Um, responsibly of telling the story in the order of which things happen. Okay. So I say girl. that to say, please, if you if you're able to, she lying. Start at the introduction she disclaimer lying. video. Start with part one. She's lying. And then just watch each video. She the liar. Because a lot of the questions people are having that I'm seeing in the comments, and I say this respectfully, is just because you did not go I to the other videos and watch them. You in want order. them to go watch your story? That's just the. First thing I want I to say. I wouldn't give a damn. Um, I know what the fuck happened. It is happened. important that I get this story out, but that it's done, like I said, responsibly. To me, responsibly is being honest, even if it makes me look bad, but then also trying to be clear and not ramble all over the place. You've been so doing I'm that. See how she lied again? Time to been rambling. tell you this is what happened For 30 parts. at this time. This is what happened at that time. That's why there's so many parts. And we're not even to the part of the divorce yet. Girl. We're almost there, but we're not there yet. Second thing I want to clarify. I cannot stress this enough. My family and my friends did not know what was going on between Legion and I. They did not know. But you talked to one and my she told you don't leave. Knew. We've met this guy. He's dating our daughter, our niece, our cousin, our granddaughter. He seems to be a really nice guy. He seems to really love her. We know you said um, you don't like telling family from stuff. From what he has told us, he's done well for himself. He played football. Um, and he has worked at this company six, seven years. And financially, he is in a good place. From what we understand, he just moved here from California. That is what they knew. They did not know about the red flags I had. They did not know what was going on in my head. They did not know what was going on in my heart because I did not want to look stupid. I'm fully aware that when I tell this story, it's not what stupid. you said. You I'm said aware. you don't like and put family in your that. business. But at the time, I did not want to look stupid. So it was important to me to put on a, and how you don't great. We're really happy. And how you We're don't want to look house, stupid. That means everything's going you know well. there was a problem from the get go. Full well that but you don't want to take scenes, responsibility. I couldn't figure out why he wasn't showing proof of funds. They did not know. So I say that to say, I see the comments about how my aunt gave me horrible advice when I called her about the sexting on Facebook. And I want to clarify something. She did not tell me to stay with him. 
That's what she you, did not tell me to leave him. That's not her place. That's what and you that's said. Not what you she said she told to you to go back home. She simply was in shock that any of this had happened and did not know what to give me advice on. The one thing that she did say was, look, he's not your boyfriend. Meaning, it ain't you as simple said, She as, said she oh, was your husband. Up. Go home and y'all fix go. this. Y'all work. Because you married him. My aunt is the most ride or die chick I've ever met. You fuck with me, you fuck with her. And she is straight Jersey. So I, and I, I love her for it, but I need it to, it's not fair for me to leave it out there as if, oh, she just was like her. I mean, go home and deal with it. No, never in a million years. So I just that's wanted, how you I gave it. That. You also, gave it like that, that and you said, and that's why you don't go so, to family because my mom lives in Arkansas. And when she came to visit in April, she's a liar. This y'all. is we were already married. This is her first time physically meeting Legion. My mom will tell you, she had no idea anything was amiss, but there was something that nagged her a little bit. She didn't know what it was. And my mom is the type where she's going to get on her knees in prayer. That's who she is. So for her, it was like, I don't know what it is. He seems like a nice guy. He seems to love my daughter. Um, there, Because again, there was no arguing. She's trying house. to the fix stuff because her family been watching here. this story. Even and they like, you making us look scenes, bad. We had just came off yeah, we of didn't help you. sexting incident with other women. So for her, it was like, her family done I don't her know up. what it is. She did tell me later on that it seemed as if I wasn't as happy as she thought I would have been. But again, she took it to the Lord in prayer. And her prayer was, God, protect my child. I don't know what's going on, but protect her. I don't believe that her. was my mom's response. I don't believe so she her. did not know. She did not pick up um, or overhear something that was going on while she was while she was here. She had a conver- uh, candid conversation with Legion and Legion kind of came across as it's I miss my mom. I'm, he missed his own mother. And so he called my mom mom and um, doted on her again, putting on a, sh- a charade. And so for her, it was like, you know, bless his heart. That's that's what she said. Bless his heart. Um, Girl, liar. But no, she did, she did not know liar. the specifics. Nobody knew the specifics. Liar. They didn't know the specifics until we're talking May, June of 2021. Liar. They knew that we were looking for a house. They knew that the house fell through. They did not know about the proof of funds. They did not know that he wouldn't show me the savings account, the offshore account. So I just want to say that because to me, it would be irresponsible to not clarify what family and friends knew. Um, because they these people have always been supportive of me, always had my back. I just simply did not share with them the things that I felt like were red flags because again my mindset at the time was I wanted because to be married wanted to and live in delusion. what if he isn't lying and you know I was making excuses Told for him you. to myself so I definitely would have made excuses to family and that's what you did another thing I need to clarify and I saw the comments on this about how a VP would never date someone that looked like me and to the person that wrote it that wasn't very nice <laughs> um, I need to I need you all to understand the relationship started in March of 2020. He had came he came into my life as regional manager. Okay? That is how he came into my life. Then eventually he got promoted to VP of production or operations, some VP of something. That was later on in the relationship. He showed me the paperwork where <laughs> It, it was basically a memo from HR. You know, you've now, your new position title will be VP of Girl, that man production. That, uh, we'll just say production. Office back, your baby. salary, he's the, he's the I don't of remember the exact amount because it was yeah. a very specific amount, but it was over $200,000. <laughs> it listed some of the benefits that he would have. Um, he would have an office. He would be getting an executive assistant. That's where we get David from. If you don't know who David is, please go back 
and watch the series in order. He would be getting an executive assistant. He would be getting use of the company helicopter. She is trying to convince us, baby. Car. The person said that what they said. That is where we're introduced <laughs> to the fact that he was starting to shop no for a company car that could not be more than $90,000. That's what he told me. I didn't see this in the memo, the amount of the car, but that's what he told me. Mm-hmm. So that's where you get the car shopping for the Range Rover, the Jaguar, the um, uh, the B- the BMW. He even test drove a Mercedes uh, GLE, I believe. So I'm, I'm just trying to, again, bring some clarity to this so that way we all can understand what's going on. And hopefully this just makes a lot more sense for everyone. All right. Part 31. Girl. Shit don't got to make sense for us. It didn't make sense from day one when he had the two profiles. It didn't make sense when he had to move into your house and then you and y'all done had, what, what was it, moved in in three months. It didn't make sense then. Ain't no nigga moving in me in three months and he a man, I'm moving in with you. It don't make sense when you tell me you're going to buy a house and you don't get it and I'm still there. It don't make sense when you still get my car we don't get no car. The house fell through twice. That don't make no sense. We don't need you to go back and backtrack and try to make us understand your delusional and your craziness and the way you was trying to understand stuff. We ain't going to understand it because we're trying to see how did you understand it. Baby, all of it was stupid. You want us to get how you understood bullshit and we can't understand that bullshit, baby. It, it's no way. I don't care how slow you say it, how many times you repeat it, how many let me clarify videos you do. You were stupid. So for the lady to tell you, I don't even think the lady real, the ex-wife, and you, I don't believe y'all had a phone call and she said, look, it's okay. It's not you. No, you done made this shit up because, girl, you just want to, you want to feel like you didn't do nothing wrong trying to date this man for money that you met on the app that you thought was rich and you was going to live this housewife type life where you just got everything you want. Cause when he threw out BMW, you forgot all about them houses that he didn't get you. You just forgot about everything. Every time he threw in money, what happened to London? Every time money came up, you was happy. You were trying to use him, and he used you. My stomach is growling. All right. We're going to stop here. The reason I didn't post yesterday, y'all, is because I don't know. I get frustrated, and I get, like, overwhelmed with stuff. I can't just keep going and going and going and going. So we got our 10. We're going to do our other 10 tomorrow, and we're going to stop and breathe. Gallon made one you. If you don't be you, nobody else will. Until then, cue the music.